blessed day. I hope that you've had a good day. I'm sure that many of you are just leaving work, coming home to work, looking forward to eating that nice meal that you have prepared on your table, or you're going to stop at a restaurant and get something to eat. Nonetheless, whether you've had a good or bad day, I hope that you are staying strong for the Lord. I hope that you are a Christian. If you are not, today is the day of salvation for you and your family. You can get saved right now in your car. You can get saved right now in your house. You don't have to come forward to a church service to get saved. All you have to do is place your faith in Jesus Christ today, trusting in Him as your personal Savior, realizing that you have sin in your life. You can't get right with God. You're hopeless. That's why Jesus is your only answer. If you trust in Him today... You will be saved 100%. You believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. And welcome to the family. Now, Satan will come after you. He will do his best to get you to stumble. That is why finding a church near you, a grace-based, solid church that is sound in their doctrine, just find a church near you that you can connect with. Jesus wants you to grow in your relationship with him. Jesus wants you to grow in your fellowship with him, and Jesus wants you to grow in the knowledge, the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I encourage you with that today. You know what? As a father, I care so much about my four babies. Regardless of how old they are, they will always be my babies. I care so much about them, and I understand the importance of me being in their life. You know, I have a lot of responsibilities, and I'm sure that many of you do as well. But if you are a parent, I want to remind you, as I remind myself, our children and our spouses at home, their first priority, first priority, we have to remember that in the midst of life, in the midst of all the responsibilities that we have, we need to make sure that we're at home. We need to make sure that we spend time with our spouses, with our children, because there will be a day where our kids will look back and they will talk to us about the memories that they that we made with them and that they remember. They will say, Mom, Dad, I remember that one time you did this, you did that. That made me feel so good, or whatever. They're going to remember their childhood, and it's important that we make sure that we are a part of their childhood. We live in a culture today where many people want to push an agenda that says, No, your son is really not a boy. He is a girl. And he can decide that at the age of three, at the age of five. We live in a culture where where people were really Satan behind the scenes, but people are making the choice to follow that agenda, Satan's agenda. We live in a culture where people are attacking the structure, the God-made structure of the family, where a father and a mother both raise children up to be followers of him, to be followers of Jesus. There are some people out there who don't like that. And it's our job as Christians to love those people who are pushing those that agenda. Yes, that can be hard, but nonetheless, it's what Christians are called to do. We're supposed to love those who hate God. <clears throat> we're supposed to love our enemies. But nonetheless, we're supposed to take a stand for what is right. We're not to rejoice with unrighteousness, nor are we to act like It doesn't exist, and we're not to do anything about it. Um, Today, I want to share with you one scripture. I'm in my personal studies in Deuteronomy, and I came to a commentary note in my Bible that pointed me to Ezekiel chapter 18, specifically verse 2. Just all, I guess I'll just start in verse 1. It says, The word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel says. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel. So there's a proverb. It says, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Read that again. The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Now what in the world does that mean? 
the proverb of what this means is that concerning our sin, the choices that fathers and parents, the parents make, will affect their children. That is essentially what this proverb is teaching. Although there are cumulative effects of sin, the Lord here declares in this scripture that each individual is accountable for his own sin. The choices that I make as a dad will affect my children because they watch daddy. Boy, I can't tell you how many times my kids have come to me and said, Hey, dad, do you remember when you did this? Do you remember when you did that? And they said, do you remember when you put put this on the counter or whatever it is, and I, you know, in in my mind, I'm thinking, how in the world did they remember that? They remember it because they watch, they pay attention, they listen to the things that their parents say. I want to remind you of that as a parent. Your your kids watch you, and it's important that we make sure that as parents, we realize that we are careful how we live, not only in our private lives when our kids aren't around, but in front of them. And with that in mind, I wanted to share with you some lyrics from a song. It's called Walk a Little Straighter by Billy Currington. And you know what? I think somebody else wrote this in the past. I could be wrong, but I think I remember hearing this when I was a kid. Nonetheless, it's a really good song. And the chorus in this says it's it's a little boy talking about his relationship with his dad. And the little boy looks back on his life with his dad, and his dad is apparently in this song a a drunk. He drinks all the time. And the lyrics go like this. says, Walk a little straighter, Daddy. You're swaying side to side. Your footsteps make me dizzy, and no matter how I try, I keep tripping and stumbling. If you look down here, you'd see. Walk a little straighter, Daddy. You're leading me. Fathers of the households, you are a leader of your household. Whether you have children at home or children in college or children who are married, you are still the leader of your household. That is what you are. That is what God has called you to be. God has called you to be a kingdom-minded father. Our children are looking up to us, even if they're in college, even if they're married. But for those who still have children at home, for those who are raising their children right now, pay attention to how you're doing it. Be there for your kids. If you have the choice, just get all this extra money that you really don't need or spend time with your kids. You pick to spend time with your kids because when you look back, you won't have any regrets. One thing that I don't want to do I do have regrets, let me tell you. There are some things that I regret in life. However, one thing I must make sure that I, the regrets that I don't have in the future, is that I look back on my life and say, wow, I wish I would have spent more time with my kids. I tell you what, if you find yourself in that situation today where your kids are not your primary focus, they're not your, they're not your top priority, you need to rearrange your priority list, as well as me. I'm preaching to myself just as much as I am to you. This is really not a long podcast today, but nonetheless, I I, I want to encourage you with that scripture. Again, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. The fathers, the parents, they make the choices and the choices of those parents will affect the children. Pay attention to what your kids watch on TV nowadays. In fact, I would even encourage you If you can, if you have the time, watch what your kids watch before they watch it. (laughs) Does that make sense? Focus on what's on their tablets. Because we live in a day today where there's a lot of garbage on on the tablets, especially the ads that pop up in between gameplay. Um, I've personally seen this with my own kids, and we've had to take care of that. I encourage you. As a follower of Jesus Christ, as a disciple of Jesus, as a kingdom father and a kingdom mother, raise your children up in the way that they are called to go. And they're called to be followers of Jesus. What this world needs today is more Jesus. 
That is exactly what they need today. And I, I'm, I'm afraid that if this country keeps going the direction that it's going, keeping God out of a lot of things, that's not going to be good. And you know what? As a parent, as a grandparent, we all think about the future. At least I do. I know before I was a parent, I didn't think so much about the future. I did, but it wasn't as important to me as it is now. Because I have kids. And they're going to have kids. And they're going to have kids. That's the plan, at least, I think. As parents, we are called to lead our kids to be disciples for Jesus. To be the mouthpiece for Jesus. In a spiritually lost and dying world. Pay attention to the choices that you make, as I will as well as a parent. If you are not a Christian today, place your faith in Jesus Christ. And if you are a Christian today, I hope that the last episode that we had, the podcast episode of the blessings that we have with salvation, all of those, the list, the seven things, that those blessed you, that those brought some happiness into your world. And if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to that podcast episode. If you're a Christian Um, There are certain blessings that you have in Christ, and you need to know those. You need to know what's in your spiritual bank account. I know I want to know that as well. I hope that this has been a blessing to you, and until next time, God bless. (laughs) 